The next item is moving target defense. Like the heading suggests, it's about creating a defense technique that can uh, change uh, based on the environment and type of exposure that we have. So simply, MTD is a defense mechanism that continuously changes the attack surface to thwart cyber attacks. And different types of changes can be made in the system and they can be characterized into mainly three, uh, uh, three types. First one is the shuffle. Uh, for example, the virtual IP address uh, can be changed um, every T seconds. And this is shuffling. So not just the IP address, but it can be applied to um, like the routings, um, the system call, directions, etc. So there's many things uh, can be shuffled in different layers of the system. Next one is diversity. We have a homogeneous network with the same hosts, but now we're going to add some diversity by uh, variating different type of servers that we have. So we have two Apache servers, now we replace one with a Windows server. Then by doing this, we're going to change the exposure of the servers. So the Windows will have different uh, vulnerabilities associated compared to the Apache. So if the attacker was targeting one of them, then they, they might have to change the attack uh, scenario in order to compromise them both. The last one is redundancy. So remember, the security Information security has three objectives, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So redundancy is rather more focused on the availability side, where we try to provide more resources, such that it will try to mitigate uh, denial of service types of attacks. So if one uh, server goes down, then there's a backup server that can be used to uh, keep on providing the service to legitimate users. So moving target defense can be, as mentioned before, uh, applied in different layers. For example, at the application layer, we can have code regenerations or diversifications. Uh, at the transport layer, the routing uh, uh, nodes can have redundancies. So if one route fails, you can go into a different route. Uh, routing can be shuffled. Uh, at the internet layer, uh, the IPs can be shuffled, and also we can have uh, virtual machines, uh, virtualizations, uh, shuffling as well. Okay. And uh, there are more examples. So how does it work? Why, why do we want to shuffle things, change things, um, update things as we go? Well, let's think about a successful attack and given time. So here at the bottom, the service uh, this denotes how frequently it was changed. So TK0 is at uh, the, the initial stage. TK1 here is the second stage and fourth. Okay. So the successful attack, uh, all the stages of its attack has fallen uh, within the time period of that particular service. Okay. So the probing was done, uh, enough time to construct it, and finish launching the attack. And that falls within the time frame. So the attack can be successful. If uh, the attack duration needs longer, for example, it took longer to probe, uh, took longer to construct the attack and launch the attack, then we can plot this particular attack because now we have moved on to a different type of service. Okay? So maybe this can be a diversity-based um, defense technique. And as a result, uh, this particular attack can be thwarted. And as you can see, if we can shorten this period of time and we make the changes more frequently, then we can um, uh, thwart attacks uh, more successfully for, by making the time frame very short for the attackers to launch it. Of course, there is a trade-off. What could it be? Well, if we are changing the service very frequently, then there's going to be some overhead associated with, and therefore it's going to affect how the service performs. So let's have a closer look at individual types of MTD. Firstly, the shuffle. The shuffle technique changes the configuration of the system uh, such that the connections or dependencies uh, can be altered, uh, altered 
but at the same time, the operations are maintained. So essentially, what we want to achieve using moving target defense is that whatever we do to the system is still going to do the same thing, but we're going to make some changes such that the attack scenarios have to be altered. So existing vulnerabilities are not removed due to the shuffle because we are just reorganizing the structure using existing components. So the vulnerabilities may have relationships between different uh, hosts or applications, but the dependencies are changed uh, within the system uh, due to the shuffle. So therefore, uh, this can delay the reconnaissance process as well as breaking an ongoing attack. So for example is a open flow random host mutation. Uh, this is based on the SDN. Uh, how many of you heard about the SDN? So SDN is a software defined networking where you can uh, configure the flows. So how the no hosts in the network can connect to each other. The flows, data flows, uh, changes. It can change that uh, on the fly. So typically, a host has one IP address, but in this particular scheme, what we're doing is a host has a physical IP address, but at the same time, you are given a virtual IP address, and virtual IP address is going to be used for other hosts to communicate each other. So the only person who knows the physical address is yourself and the SDN controller, which maps, uh, which determines how the flows, data flows in the network. Uh, the virtual IP are used for establishing communication channels and they are shuffled every X seconds, so say. And the open flow switches are updated to re redirect flows and update the existing communications. All right, so let's have a look at an example. In the first phase, we have the attacker uh, who, have, uh, who has been scanning around and found vulnerabilities in the web server by scanning. So here we have a web server. The real IP address is 192.168.0.33, but it has a different virtual IP address. So the real IP address, remember, is uh, only visible to yourself and the controller. Okay. So what the attacker sees is address at 75.22, which has a vulnerability which he can exploit. But what happens in the second step is the controller is going to shuffle the virtual IP. So the hosts, uh, the servers or DNS itself, they don't shuffle their own IPs because the host, uh, the, contro the SDN controller also has to update the switches in between to make sure that the, the flows go to the right direction. So once the controller changes the VI virtual IP, it also updates the tables uh, inside the open flow switches so the packets um, are directed correctly. So in the meantime, the attacker is preparing, preparing the exploit while the normal users can still uh, authenticate because users are not connecting using the uh, virtual IP address, rather the name services. So the next, the attacker is trying to launch an exploit to the address that has been discovered previously, 75.22, but it has been now changed, which means the location of the server from the attacker's point of view have moved. Okay? And there is no such information in the switches uh, where the mapping has changed. And for the normal users, they can continue talking to the server uh, because that's where all the packets uh, will be redirected for them. So the users are not talking to the VI virtual IP address, they're talking uh, to the server names. Okay? Uh, of course, the attacker can do the same, but in order to talk to the server, you have to be authenticated. That's why the uh, attacker was looking and probing around the network to try to find the addresses. So, so Shuffle can uh, protect our assets in different ways. You don't necessarily have to patch our vulnerabilities, but we can avoid our vulnerabilities being exploited. But there are some limitations to those techniques. Firstly, uh, shuffle system state may not be secure. So you may be able to shuffle it, but the state that you end up with may not be actually secure. It might be actually make it easier for the attacker to discover and exploit uh, the contents. Uh, shuffle may violate security requirements. So whenever we create changes uh, in our system, 
the initial design probably follows some security protocols and designs and satisfies some requirements. So when we do shuffle it, we need to be careful that as a result, we do not violate any of the security requirements. And some shuffles may not be feasible. For example, cannot satisfy the performance requirements. If you are shuffling too many, too many within a short time frame, this may not meet the performance guarantee that the service is trying to provide to the users. And of course, shuffle may not be applicable in all uh, system settings. For example, in a homogeneous network of systems, there is no point in shuffling because you are still exposing the same vulnerabilities even if you switch to a different host. And also, is a key question, how frequently should you shuffle? And what type of method should we adopt to shuffle? Proactively, which means we set a specific time and every time that happens, it changes, or reactively, uh, when some event happens, like we have detected some attack, then we try to shuffle it, etc. So all those things need to be considered uh, when we try to implement shuffle into our system. Let, uh, let's have a look at the diversity now. Diversity technique has been used uh, for a while, and it can be implemented in uh, various layers of the systems. What it trying to achieve is to provide a replacement of an existing component uh, with a different implementation or configuration such that uh, you still provide the same functionalities but the way it's processed is different. And existing vulnerabilities may be replaced with a new set of vulnerabilities uh, because now we are using a different logics or different uh, components, code, etc. Uh, to do the same thing. So the underlying uh, mechanisms have changed and it, it may be associated with uh, uh, different vulnerabilities. For example, you are going to replace the Windows-based computer to Mac. You can still browse the internet, you can still open text editors, you can still do other things like watch videos, write code, but the way it provides those services uh, from those operating systems uh, are different. Here's an example of compiler-generated software diversity. A version of software has a specific signature in binary, and uh, those softwares, as we've seen before, have instructions that need to be carried out in order to do what it wants to do. So these instructions can be remapped with um, other instructions to do the same operations. Uh, simply put, something like 3 plus 5 is the same as 14 minus 6. So here is uh, a few commands, uh, instructions, where those two instructions can be replaced by following um, the one on the right hand side. You don't have to, uh, I'm not going to test you on the knowledge in the instructions, but it's just to demonstrate that the instructions can be replaced and such similar ideas can be applied in different layers. So here is how uh, the architecture of divers diversification happens. We have um, variants. Uh, we have monitors and the cores are going to monitor uh, using the comparison unit okay, and make sure that those variants will generate uh, the same type of outputs and the monitor will keep monitoring to ensure that those variants work the same way even though their underlying implementations can vary. And similar to the shuffle, diversity has its own limitations. For example, the new variant may be more vulnerable. So we may have introduced something new which has different underlying architecture, but it could be easier for the attacker to exploit. Then it's not necessarily a good thing. And there are limitations on how we can generate variants. And the cost of implementing those diversity techniques can be quite high. So if we want to diversify our service, then the whole set of services have to be diversified. And the only way to do that is to purchase different licenses for different services, but and then to implement it to do the same thing. So you can see the cost can stack up quite quickly. And also to replace it with a different variant, there there's going to be some downtime. Unless we have a replication and then we host the diverse, diversity, diversity 
uh, variant in there and then seamlessly migrate. But then again, that's related to the cost. The last uh, class is the redundancy, and it's to ensure the availability of the system. The replication, uh, the replicas provide resources to handle high usage of the system. So more replicas we have, then uh, we are better protected against availab availability type of attacks. So this can be used in conjunction with other MTD techniques, uh, which is to provide defense against uh, other attack types that are trying to violate the confidentiality and integrity as well. So let's have a look at a DDoS attack. So here's an example. So you see there are a few attackers and uh, there are legitimate users that are trying to connect to uh, the servers. So here's kind of like a botnet type of attack. So we have C3 and C4 controlling a set of botnets, and those are directed to both uh, RS1 and RS2. So what we can do is, this is a combination of uh, redundancy and shuffle. So first we have a redundancy on the right hand side. We have multiple replications. Now we have R3 and R4 as well. Uh, and also we're going to shuffle who are connected to where. So those bunch of botnets using some of the detection methods, so who's generating a lot of uh, traffic, then they can be redirected to a particular host, a uh, particular server. Then the top uh, servers who have been redirected, the users have been redirected to, can still access those servers. Okay? And after a few rounds of shuffles, we can isolate the botnets uh, from the normal users as much as possible. So by adding redundant servers and combining it with a shuffle to identify bots, we can ensure the availability of the cloud resource to the uh, legitimate users. Of course, there are some problems associated with the redundancy as well, such as resource constraints. There are so much resources that we can provide redundancy to. We're not going to have hundreds and thousands of redundancy servers because it's just not cost effective. Redundancy by, by itself is not effective against um, attacks that are violating C and I, and also it can have a degrading performance factors. Uh, increasing redundancy does not proportionally increase the availability um, through our research it shows. So in summary, uh, moving target defense uh, can be uh, implemented to provide uh, security uh, through constantly shifting the attack surface of the system. And different MTD techniques are designed to provide different security uh, into a system. And there are, of course, some trade-offs and limitations of each of those techniques. There are still work to do in order to assess the effectiveness of moving target defense techniques. For example, there are lists of different moving target defense techniques. How effective are they? If some of those techniques have the same uh, security goal or security objectives, can we compare them? Which one is more effective in this scenario? Okay, so things like this uh, need, still needs to be solved. And also, if moving target defense can be applied in combinations, what will be the best combinations to produce? Uh, given the limited resources, what might be the best combinations out of the whole set that we have? And do combinations of moving target defense really provide secure environment? or does it make it more vulnerable? Okay, some of those questions can still be answered uh, through research. Okay? And we will conclude this particular lecture here. <laughs>